There we go. Welcome to Random Randomness, everyone. This is uh, episode six, something. I don't know. I have no idea what order this one's going to be posted in, so we'll figure it out as we go along. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. So I've done uh, a few maker videos, some hikes, uh, may even have an aviation uh, you know, flight video uploaded at this point, but I'm going to do something a little different. The video editing I've done for this channel so far, I, I'm a Linux user. Uh, I've been using Linux for 10 plus years. This is uh, Ubuntu 20.04, and I use KDEN Live, which is a, actually a KDE application. I use the default Ubuntu desktop because I like it better than KDE, I know. Flame me, by all means. Uh, but I like KDEN Live as a video editor. It actually has a lot of really good features, and it, and it can do some of the higher end stuff that I like to do. One of the things that I've really been missing is the ability to do GPU encoding. So for those of you that stumble across this video and didn't actually go searching for it, I'll kind of explain what that is. You have um, a couple of processors in this. This is a laptop, a Dell Latitude E7470. Uh, doesn't have a lot of horsepower to it. Uh, but you essentially have two processing units in it. You have the CPU, but you also have a GPU that's, that's an onboard uh, chip that's used for graphics processing. It's not meant to run games or everything, but it does have hardware encoders and decoders. And the reason that's important is software decoding and encoding using your CPU will essentially render your system unusable during the time that you're doing uh, the encoding or the decoding. It takes a lot more processing power on the CPU than it would if you offloaded that to the GPU. And I didn't want situations where I was waiting on KDEN Live to do something like proxy videos or do the rendering where I essentially couldn't be working on other things at the same time. I spent the better part of my Sunday morning and good chunk of my Sunday afternoon figuring out how specifically to configure KDEN Live to do proxy videos and rendering using the Intel GPU that is embedded into this laptop. I imagine there's quite a few out there, quite a few of you out there that don't have an Nvidia or an AMD graphics card and you're using just the embedded one uh, or you're doing it on a different system or for whatever reason you'd like to take advantage of the GPU processing. Really does make a difference. I'm gonna do some screen capture, we're gonna basically talk through how to configure and actually how to compile uh, Kden Live uh, on Ubuntu. This is Kden Live uh, 20.04.1 on Ubuntu Long Term Support 20.04 using an Intel GPU. Going to talk you through all the configuration to set up everything in order to be able to use the Intel GPU for creating your proxy videos, doing your graphics processing, doing your playback, and doing your rendering. Uh, we'll get this video rolling and uh, show you how to configure all of this and hopefully this is helpful to somebody in the future. So, all right, let's get to it. Uh, a couple things to, just to get set up with here. This is uh, Ubuntu 20.04 uh, with all of the latest patches. I am running a custom compiled version of KDEN Live 20.04.1. Um, and the reason I'm running a custom compiled version is that uh, there are libraries, newer versions of libraries than the packaged one and the, the app image that you can get from uh, KDEN Live uh, doesn't include GPU support for Intel. So that was not usable for this particular uh, setup that I was trying to do. And the one that comes in the PPA, the one that you can, the package you can just download and install, I actually had some stability issues with and I don't know if there was a package mismatch or decided I'm just gonna compile my own, see if that takes care of it, and it seems to. A couple of things to get started with. If you just uh, Google Kden Live uh, Compile Ubuntu, 
um, you're going to get one of the first links or the first link is going to be this Kden Live development link. Uh, these instructions were specific to Ubuntu uh, 19.10, uh, but they also work on 20.04. I did not have to deviate really from these instructions at all. Uh, they are pretty basic. It's nothing anybody shouldn't be able to just run. If you can find this community.kde.org slash kdenlive slash development page uh, and just follow the instructions here, you should be able to get kdenlive compiled really without any issue. It, it took uh, maybe all of 20 minutes or so for, for this to be done. But the reason you do this is so that you get the Intel support that's built into the latest versions of Melt and some of the other uh, dependencies that Kden requires, Kden Live requires, um, you don't get those necessarily from the app image uh, and you the PPA I had issues with, your mileage may vary. So this is the compiled version of Kden Live right here I'm using. I already have a package pulled up. You will notice when you compile it that initially if you go into settings and you go to th color theme you're only gonna have one option and it's default. And because of that, you're gonna have a really ugly white uh, screen. And, and for anybody that's like me and is a big fan of dark theme, uh, then that's not gonna work for you. It's gonna drive you insane like it did with me. So in order to get these other options in here after you've compiled Kden Live, you actually have to come in here and install the Breeze theme. Let's see if I can actually type it right. So, so the one that you want is this uh, Breeze down here. It, it's just called Breeze and it has all of the themes that you need in it. I now had my nice dark theme back and uh, seems to look pretty good. It doesn't really look any different than the app image. So there are, before you can go in and start playing around with the GPU processing, there's actually, and I, I stumbled across this later on after uh, things really weren't uh, working very well, there are other packages that you need on an Intel system. And you wouldn't really know these things unless you happen to do what I did, which was stumble around until you uh, found them in a Google search on a Reddit post somewhere. So there are two different drivers um, that you need to upgrade to. Essentially what you're doing is you're getting rid of the um, you're getting rid of the open source and you're going with the non-free drivers. So there are two of them. So the first one is this i965. So all of the Intel GPUs use this i965 driver. Uh, VA is the VA API driver and you want the one that says shaders. So i965 VA driver shaders. You're gonna and when you install you're gonna get both of them. The AMD 64, 64 bit and the 32 the bit versions. Um, chances are you have this one which is the open source i965 VA driver. That's it, it's, it's the open source one. It doesn't include a lot of the extras that are necessary. So if you just run uh, sudo apt install i965-va-driver-shaders and you hit enter, you're gonna get, it's gonna say, hey, you already have this other driver installed, I'm gonna remove it and then apt will install the two that you need. In addition to that one, there's a couple other packages that you need. So you are probably running the Intel Media VA driver on your default Ubuntu 20.04 installation. You do not want that one. You actually want the non-free. So that's this guy right here. So same thing, you would install, sudo apt install this driver and it would, it would install both the AMD64 and the 32-bit. It would also uninstall these other two, the, the open source uh, free ones. Um, in addition to that, I would highly recommend that you install this Intel GPU tools. And that will actually give you the ability to uh, do some, uh, there's a top command, so it's essentially uh, 
checking on uh, how much of the GPU you're using at any given point, and I'll show you that as we get into configuring this and setting it up. So once you've got those packages installed, we're gonna come in here and we are going to uh, make some changes to the default settings uh, for proxying. So we're gonna come down in here into configure KDEN Live under the settings menu. And first thing we're gonna do is go to playback. We're gonna make sure use GPU processing move it library that this is checked off. And when you hit apply, it'll pop up and say, you gotta restart KDEN Live, go ahead and do it. Uh, and let it load back up, come back into the settings at that point. We're then gonna go into proxy clips. And there are, um, encoding profiles that are already in here. So we want to enable proxy clips, generate them for videos larger than a certain size. The default's a thousand pixels and that seems to work pretty well. Uh, but you'll notice that there are already some VA API encoders in here. VA API is the API, the application programming interface, for the Intel GPU and it's what tells the Intel GPU to use its hardware encoders and decoders but you have to be very explicit in telling it how to use them in the settings that you pick. So that's what we're gonna go into next. So I created a couple of encoding profiles in here uh, with some of my own settings. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna click the little uh, configure profiles over here. You're gonna add one, so you're gonna click add. I would select one that you're gonna work with as a default, so you can select this X264 VA API click add and then name your own and it'll default in what you want to use. We're really going to change quite a bit of it. So you might as well start, you can start with a clean sheet, essentially. Um, I've created two in here, a hardware decode one and a non-hardware decode one. I'm still working around with the non-hardware decode to see if I can get that one working properly. So we're going to focus right now on the hardware decode. The difference is, the reason you need two profiles is that the Intel GPU has the ability to decode video that you're using for your projects. So it has the ability to hardware decode that video and then re-encode it using hardware as well. The problem is not all video formats are supported by the Intel GPU. So uh, common ones, X264, uh, iPhone uh, that's using uh, the what HPE high performance encoder, the H265 or X265, the, uh, so iPhone videos, I'll show you those, they actually work with this hardware decode. Really obscure video formats probably won't, uh, so you might want to have a, a non-hardware decode uh, setting, but for right now we'll just, we're going to focus on the hardware decode one and show you what those settings look like. So. So this is what I ended up using for settings. So I'll kind of talk you through this. So there's quite a bit in here. So we're gonna, we're gonna tell the decoder and the encoder to uh, initialize a hardware device and it's the VA API interface. We're then gonna tell it we wanna use hardware acceleration and we wanna use the VA API interface. We're then gonna tell it when you use hardware acceleration, use a particular output format and we want that format to be the VA API format, probably sensing a theme here. Uh, we're also gonna tell it to use a particular VA API device. In this case, we're gonna tell it the dev dry render D128. This is standard. Everybody that's got an Intel GPU, it should be that device. That's what the kernel uh, device is for an Intel GPU. Uh, the dash I needs to be standalone. Uh, that is the input file that's gonna be proxied. Uh, we just leave the dash I in there. You don't need to put anything after it. Dash VF, video format. We're gonna add quite a bit. All of this right here is part of the video format. And I'll sort of explain what all of these things do. So HW download is actually needed because it takes the decoded video that's stored in the GPU memory downloads it into regular uh, into regular memory for your CPU and that is necessary to apply some of these software filters that are part of this stream so even though 90% of what you're doing is actually being done 
in the hardware decoder and encoder, there is still some CPU stuff, and so you have to get that data out of the GPU memory and into the CPU memory in order to do some of that software stuff. And that's what the HW download. It says, hey, take it out of hardware, throw it into regular memory, I'm gonna do some stuff. You want the format to be NV12. I couldn't tell you what NV12 is, that's just the format you want it to be. Uh, you're then going to put a pipe symbol and that says, okay, this is, we've done sort of the decode side of video format. We're not going to do the encode side. And we're going to apply uh, some VA API. Oops, let's, let's not do that. We're going to apply VA API. I, I, this is a format, I guess. Couldn't really tell you beyond that what it does. We're going to tell it to hardware upload, which essentially says, take that decoded data that we just downloaded into the CPU memory and applied some base filters to, now take it and put it back in GPU memory because we're gonna have the GPU then encode. So you need the download and then you need the upload. At that point, we're also gonna apply an, a VA API scaling factor. And this is what I like to use for my, uh, for my videos. These are, these are proxy videos again, is 640 by 360. So these are, uh, essentially will take a 1080p video and break it down into something uh, about a quarter of the size and about, a, if my math is off here, I believe about an eighth of the storage space because there's an exponential thing when you double, when you double the size of a format of a, sorry, you double the size of a resolution, you actually get four times the amount of storage. So. Anyway, 640 by 360, 3, uh, 360 seems to work pretty well for me. Um, the BV, this is how, how many video bits. So five megs, I uh, believe that's five megs a second, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, audio bit rate is 128K, is a little lower than normal, keeps the video size on the proxy smaller. And we're gonna tell it to use the H.264 VA API encoder. So any, everything that you see VA API is hardware. We're using the Intel encoder and decoder in the, G, in the GPU. So uh, this is the setting that I have made work. I've tested these with a couple different video types. I'm most commonly in editing off of iPhone video or iPad video. I know a lot of you are probably using you know, uh, GoPros and all kinds of other stuff. This should work for any format that is hardware decodable. So uh, anything that's MP4 that's already X264 or X265 should work with this proxy setting. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. I'm actually gonna click cancel just in case I made any changes to it by accident. Uh, but you're gonna save that and give it a good, give it a good name. I, this one I know is doing hardware decoding. So it's an X264 VA API encoder that's also doing hardware decode. So, and once we've done that, we've applied it to our settings, we then need to go in and go into our project settings under proxy, and we need to select it here under encoding profile. So this is, you can see, I've selected the one that we just did, X264 VA API hardware decode. You hit okay, and that's the one that is now being used. So I've already encoded a couple videos, or already proxied a couple of videos, so, I want you to see a couple things on this page. So I'm actually gonna, we're gonna make this a little smaller here so I can put some other stuff on screen with it. So that's probably pretty good right there. So some of the stuff I wanna show you, up in the corner here I have a little, uh, this is system resources, it's a system resource monitor. This first column here, this is CPU. So right now I'm using uh, 20, 20 or so percent of CPU. So normally what would happen if I came in here and generated proxy videos or did anything else, uh, that CPU would spike 100%. It would sit there and everything else I tried to do on the system would essentially become unusable until those proxy videos were generated. So I'm gonna show you the difference uh, with that, uh, show you what uh, generating a proxy with Intel, with the GPU in use actually does. And we're gonna, what we're going to do is bring over our uh, terminal window here and we're going to load up Intel GPU top. And you have to do this with the sudo command because it, it does require root privileges. So 
There's uh, this is essentially a snapshot of how busy your GPU is. And you can see it does, it's doing some rendering. This is everything that's outputting to the screen essentially at this point. Um, this video, this third one down here, this is actually, uh, when it does encoding, it's this video line that we're gonna look at. So your renderer goes up, but your video also goes up as well. So we're gonna just leave this here and I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna right click a video and we're gonna tell it to create a proxy clip for that video. And when we do that, I want you to see what happens. So I'd like you to notice right off the bat, CPU went up a tiny little bit. We're not even, we're maybe at 50% usage right now. Still plenty of responsiveness on the system. I can drag windows around. I can probably, you know, get in and search stuff on the web and open things up and, you know, do whatever else I want to. Let's go launch Facebook and whatever. It's plenty responsive, but while it's generating that proxy, notice the video. This is all Intel GPU being used right here. So the render went up a little bit and the video definitely went up because it's doing the encoding. Uh, I've never seen it get much more above like 30%. Uh, I'm not sure the reason for that, but here's this is a 53 minute uh, 1080p 60 frame per second iPhone video that is generating a proxy taking up less than half my CPU, using the GPU, not bogging me down, and this proxy normally would have taken probably about five or six minutes. It's gonna be done in about a minute. Uh, and that's what I found with the, uh, with the settings, uh, using the actual GPU, you're looking at five to six times faster to do tasks that you would normally do. So there we go, we have a 53 minute video that we just proxied, took us about a minute to proxy us, proxy it. The proxy video is now, uh, you know, much smaller, it's uh, 640 by 360, and uh, you know, should, should be a lot easier to work with. Um, the other thing I'd like you to see is, I did pull a couple of proxy videos down here and just applied a wipe to them. And I'm, I'm not gonna show you the output, uh, but I would like you to uh, just notice that with GPU processing turned on, watch my CPU up here again and watch as this goes through the preview, how little CPU it actually uses. So a little bit of a CPU spike when it came to do the wipe, but that was it. Otherwise, watching the videos and, and even applying that wipe uh, there was a tiny little stutter, but other than that, pretty smooth and very usable. Um, this is typically how I prefer to work, uh, is with proxy videos. Uh, unless you have a massively powerful machine, you're really gonna be stuck using proxy videos. And it does make it a lot smoother. It, it uh, uses a lot re less resources on your, on your system uh, and really does make it quite a bit better. So uh, definitely something that, um, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of is is using those proxies. So, um, all right, one more video for you. So, wanted to actually show the render settings here as well. So, the renderer, and we'll go in here and actually show you what settings I'm using. So, again, created my own renderer. Uh, I put it under the generic HD for web, mobile devices, blah blah blah. Essentially, the same place that the normal MP4 H.264 renderer is. I just clicked the new button to create a new profile and then created this one here. Uh, and I call it X264 VAAPI hardware decode. I believe this one is doing hardware decode just like the other one, I could be wrong. It's essentially the same settings I used for proxy and works in this case. Uh, little different, so in the proxy settings, you don't use equal signs and you use dashes. So in the proxy settings, you do the video format like that, but here in the renderer, you do it like that, and no commas also, you don't put commas between, you just leave spaces and the renderer inter interprets them. It's the same exact thing underneath. It, it, I had never really noticed this before, but uh, proxy setting, ren proxy renderer settings and renderer settings for your actual video use the melt library underneath, uh, but they just store the parameters slightly different. So, is what it is.
Um, so anyway, this is what I ended up using, uh, and I'll, I'll put this in the comments on the video just so you've got it if you want to just copy and paste it. Uh, it's also, uh, you can essentially find these settings, I use this as a guide, um, this Manjaro forum, and there's some KDE rendering, I can put this uh, link in there as well. Uh, but essentially, uh, this uh, user here had done a lot of the hard work that uh, I kind of used as a base, uh, and essentially I'm using his, he says not hardware decodable, uh, but I believe this might be the other way around. So uh, essentially use his settings, they seem to work pretty well. Um, so essentially a cut and paste of this into your own renderer, tweaked it a little bit just to play with some different settings, ended up basically going back to the, the defaults. Uh, but I'll show you this if I now do a render and so I'm rendering uh, about 40 seconds worth of video, really, really not a lot, just as a test. Uh, but we'll go ahead and render the file, but I want you to watch over here, video, and I want you to watch here, CPU. So anybody that's used KDEN Live knows when you click render, typically your CPU just goes to 100% and uh, your system becomes essentially unusable during the duration of the render. Uh, but here, we're gonna render the file we're going to wait for it to start and we're going to notice the video renderer doing a decent amount of the work and that I still have some CPU overhead here. Not a ton, uh, but enough where the system is still usable. I can still click on windows, I can still pull things, I can still open pages, I can do whatever I need to. So enough CPU overhead uh, while my rendering is going on and the rendering uh, really quite a bit quicker. This is you know, only about you know, 40, 50 seconds worth of video, uh, but a, I've seen 10 minute videos take 45 minutes to render. With the GPU rendering enabled with VAAPI and X264, I'm seeing more like seven minutes. Uh, so that's a pretty big difference. So your system is in use for the render for a lot shorter period of time and you are also not using up all of your CPU and are still able to be productive and multitask while your rendering is going on. So uh, again, really hope this helps people. Uh, I love doing videos like this and, and hopefully putting things out there that are helpful. There, who knows, there's probably a million videos out there on this already. I didn't really search YouTube. I just said, you know what, I figured out how to do it. Maybe it'll be helpful to somebody. Maybe they watched a different video and they like the way I explain it better. Who knows? Either way, hope this is helpful to you and uh, appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time. It's uh, seed in, seeded, seeded into that directory. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Greetings everyone. Uh, Hopefully I'm in shot here. Episode something, I don't know, five, six, 12, we're, I have no idea. Laptop up and running for this. Uh, Kden Live, uh, I'm sorry, we're uh, specific to